Uh, hello everyone. Uh, today is Sunday, April the 22nd, 2018. Um, and this morning over western Connecticut we had a very strange sighting. Um, UFO, if you will. A uh, very strange pattern of lights um, appeared over the western horizon at about 10.20 in the morning. Um, this view was taken uh, through a window uh, at the Terryville Congregational Church where I was attending a service and uh, noticed the formation outside the window. Uh, I don't know, uh, looking at the photo, the still photo, um, you can see we've got this shape, football shape if you will. Um, and you can't tell whether there's any connecting structure to this. Um, uh, or if they're individual lights and they are in a formation. Um, there's uh, basically no color um, and, and no sound from what I could tell. Uh, there was uh, uh, they kind of just hung there steadily, uh, looking very, very out of place. Uh, and I observed it for a minute or two. Um, and then it uh, slowly moved on. See if I can get this and move down. Let's reposition this camera a little better. Uh, move down over towards the south and uh, hung over the roof of the uh, extended building off the back side of the church to the south. Um, I still can't tell here uh, whether it was a connection. Uh, any type of connection, you know, between the lights or whether they were free um, and just flying in a formation. It could not tell. It was very difficult to tell. So, okay, um, let's go back to the original view. And if you haven't already figured out, this is a hoax. <laughs> if, if any of you have watched uh, my... Uh, videos earlier, uh, lunar observing videos, um, I deal strictly with science. Um, I'm not one to go into wild theories of UFOs. And, um, my views on life in the universe, there is probably life elsewhere in the universe. What form it takes, I have no idea. Uh, in our own solar system, the planet Mars, for example, um, could have uh, microbial life, small life forms. Uh, uh, there's been some indications of that in some studies. There was a meteorite that was discovered in the 1990s that uh, has the indications of some fossilized uh, life forms in it, but uh, it, it's never been proven. Um, the point I'm trying to make here is uh, I've spent the last week uh, reviewing a lot of uh, different sites uh, in imaging of the uh, moon and planets and such. And I've become very distraught, I guess is a good word to use, over what's going on in a lot of these channels. Um, they're, they're giving very wild, wild ideas um, about the moon, the moon being inhabited with all kinds of structures on it, um, claims that uh, Jupiter has life on it. Uh, there was even one claim out there that the beautiful Orion Nebula, which I've imaged many times uh, in my career as an uh, amateur and, and uh, advanced amateur astronomer, that it has a solid core inside, which is just completely nonsense. Um, the sites that I'm talking about, uh, if you really listen to them, the terminology they use, uh, the vocabulary, um, they just they, you can tell they have no training uh, or knowledge in astronomy, astrophysics, orbital mechanics, anything like that to do with the sky. They're just, you're using nonsense terms that just don't make sense. Uh, and, and they're putting it off as actual science research. And, and what gets me, I think, is the fact that people who don't have a knowledge of astronomy or, you know, astronomy, uh, physics or you know this type of thing they'll just fall right in line with these people because for some reason they love the idea of UFOs it's just an exciting idea and they're willing to fall right in and, and go right along um, it, it's really a shame because these same people 
claim that NASA is lying to them left and right, when in fact the people that they're lining up with and, and following are the ones that are lying to them. This one fellow in particular claims that he can get to within uh, a thousand meters or so of the surface of the moon and get these fantastic views of structures on the moon. Well, the telescope he's using, there's no way he can get within a thousand, so it looks like he's a thousand feet above the surface of the moon. At best he could do is see a crater that's roughly anywhere between about a mile to maybe on a particularly really good night to three quarters of a mile across. So in other words, you could take Yankee Stadium and drop it on the surface of the moon and he would not be able to see it with a telescope he's using, but yet he's claiming he's seeing these, these uh, uh, buildings and structures on the moon. And what he's done is he's taken images of the moon, completely uh, uh, over enhanced them, way beyond uh, anything that would be considered uh, useful in astronomy. Um, uh, and just stretch and add close-up uh, enlargement and then add some color to it and it's just and then he presents it as research and it really it's it's really um, it, it's tough for me to swallow as a as an advanced and honest and uh, pure amateur astronomer I go back to 1956 when I observed the moon for the first time and the planet Mars uh, with a good friend of mine and got me started in amateur astronomy. And ever since then I've been photographing the moon back in the old uh, film days when I had my own dark room and processed my own film on up to today with the digital image and the CCD cameras and such. Um, and uh, I know the stuff that's being presented on these channels is just way out of line. It's nowhere near um, honest presenting of the lunar surface and the pl planets also, the surface of the planets. One guy, again, he actually claimed that his views of Saturn showing structures were um, so close up that uh, he was with inside the rings. Well, again, that's totally impossible for an Earth-bound telescope. There's not even a professional telescope that can do that. Um, so, anyway, I'm just putting this out there. It's uh, Really, it's really a problem with me. Uh, I see a lot of people falling along, and they, they just, you know, without a knowledge of an astronomy, and, and they prefer to follow people like this uh, willingly. They, they happily, and they, they, the comments they leave are, you know, hey, keep it up. This is great stuff, and all that. And uh, but it's all false, and it's really a shame that uh, our, our people today are being. Uh, bombarded with this false science research that's out there with these people. Um, I'm not saying I've got the best site in the world, but, you know, my site, is, as I say, it's based on science, and I don't have that many viewers. I want to get my viewership up. I could present this image that we're looking at here. I could present that as being the absolute truth, and these are really UFOs, and... Uh, I could draw in that crowd. I could get that, and I could get my views would shoot through the roof. But I will not do that. Um, actually, what you're looking at here, and I don't think I explained it, that is a reflection in the window pane of a church chandelier. You can see it's round. That's the, the chandelier. If you look at the uh, these lights that look like lights, they're actually the, the uh, cone-shaped uh, light bulbs that look almost like a, a you know a flame or whatever. Uh, and it's just reflecting off the window. That's all it is. And the view I have of it, or it looked like it moved down over that building, the one in back, uh, this view here, all I did was move to a different location and the pattern uh, shifted uh, down over that building. And so it looked like it was over that building. So uh, I mean, that's all it was. I mean, and that's all it is. Now, there was actually a case in the 1950s when uh, UFOs became the, the rage. Uh, when Kenneth Arnold observed the first really reported UFO site over, out over the, uh, 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 the northwest um, of lights in the sky, and he was in a small plane when he saw them. But there was a photograph around 1953, I think it was, taken from a Coast Guard station in Massachusetts of a so-called pattern of UFOs in formation outside in the sky uh, over this Coast Guard station and what it turned out to be after several days of excitement and p pictures being posted all over, well, what they could for that day in 1953 anyway, it turned out to be exactly what you're looking at here. It was a reflection of light globes that were in a hallway um, in the Coast Guard station off the window. Um, 
And, but it took a few days for them to realize that that's what they were looking at. So anyway, um, uh, I don't know uh, the people that are viewing this video, uh, if you come to my site, uh, and I do hope to get some more moon videos up pretty soon. I've had a couple issues which have stopped me from imaging for a while, but I do plan to get a couple more up. I like to put, but they're going to be based on fact and science, uh, not this wild, there's life all over the place, there's structure, there's buildings. Um, you know, if you like that stuff, I mean, I'm not putting you down. I mean, you're more than free. This is a free country. You can do whatever you like. You can follow those people and, you know, wish them well and support them in their efforts. But um, it's just sad to me that I know they're presenting false data and they're drawing in people that really don't have much knowledge in this area. Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd show you how easy it is to fake UF photos and uh, you know put them out there as for the real thing. Um, so that's it for now. Hopefully, like I say shortly, uh, I'll be getting a couple more uh, lunar videos up um, and based on pure science and fact. Um, until then, guys, uh, we'll see you and take care.